So welcome back. We have been looking at space saving versions of A star. In the last session when I was showing you the impact of the weight on the evaluation function f of n is equal to g of n plus w into h of n. There was some little bit of a problem with the slides and which has been now rectified. So, I will start from there quickly go over the bit in which we were talking about pruning closed and then move on to pruning open uh, today that is the main topic of today and that is in fact the last topic of this algorithm A star. Okay. So, if we generalize A star and best first search and branch and bound and weighted A star all of them can be captured by this one function g of n plus w into h of n and as w varies the behavior of the algorithm changes and as w increases it requires less and less space but as we saw in the case of w a star it becomes eventually inadmissible. So, this is what we were planning to see uh, the case where w equal to 0 is branch and bound the algorithm explores the entire graph of 23 nodes in this case and find the solution which you can see in thicker lines in the bottom left of cost 148. Then we increase w to 1 which makes it a star, a star uses g of n plus h of n and what we get is a slightly smaller graph that is explored. You can see that a star has explored only 14 of the 23 nodes, but it has found the optimal path also. In fact, the same path has what branch and bound found and this of course, we are not surprised because we have shown that a star is admissible. Then when we increase the weight to 2, what we got was w a star and you can see that w a star saw much smaller number of nodes which is 9, but it found a more expensive path which had a cost of 153. In fact, w a star never ventured into the bottom left half of the graph. Whereas, A star did explore a little bit of the top right, but decided that bottom left was better and then moved on to that essentially. Whereas, W A star being a little bit more influenced by the heuristic function, once it found a path which seemed to be going closer to the goal, it headed into that path. The path found by W A star was better than the path found by best first, that is the algorithm we started search with and we can see that best first see only 8 nodes. These are the 8 nodes which are not colored, but which have numbered in them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but it found a much longer path and the reason for that was that it did not explore this node because its, con its competitor so to speak was much better. It was closer to the goal and therefore, it chose the node which we have labeled as number 4 and never discovered the path which W A star found essentially. Then of course, we decided that uh, we still want to save on space and we looked at IDA star and we looked at RBFS and then we looked at situations where in the monotone condition uh, you can afford to prune the closed list and we explored that in the last session. I will quickly go over these slides. So, we will also serve as a recap. So, the idea is that uh, because closed has two purposes, one is to avoid infinite loops and the other is to reconstruct the path to find alternate mechanisms for doing both these things essentially. How to avoid going back to the closed nodes, if we are not maintained closed then how can we check whether we have reached closed and the other is to reconstruct the path. What Korf and Zhang showed was that if you modify the open list to keep a memory of where you came from and bar those nodes from where you came, uh, then you do not have to regenerate them. So, in this example here when A was being expanded, its parents in close G and F were barred and they were not regenerated. So, the search only looked forward towards B, C, D and E and in that way avoided leaking back into the close list. The same thing we continued when you looked at expansion of node E, when we expanded node E next. Uh, again, uh, it only looked forward, it only looked at nodes D, H and I, it did not even look at node A 
from where it came and this process continued and we saw that what you could do is maintain only the open list which is shown in blue uh, or cyan nodes with the blue node being the one about to be picked presumably whereas the closed list is deleted entirely essentially and problem remained of how to find the path to the goal and the solution offered by this algorithm called divide and conquer frontier search was to maintain a relay layer of nodes at roughly at the halfway mark and the idea there was that once you have found the goal node then you can break up the problem into two sub problems and solve them recursively. What is the advantage here? The advantage is that we need less space. We have already thrown away closed and as we solve smaller and smaller problems we will need less space and we had seen that uh, by solving this we may be doing some extra work but that could well worth be the trouble worth well worth the trouble essentially of doing that extra work. Then we looked at an algorithm called smart memory graph search which said that why do you want to keep breaking up the problem into smaller parts because there may be the situation where the memory that you have is enough to solve the problem completely. So, do not be rigid about doing only recursive uh, break, break up and solve. Do that only when there is, is a need to do that and in that sense this algorithm earned its name of being a smart memory search algorithm or smart memory graph search algorithm and what it said was that uh, keeps sensing how much memory is available and only when it senses that memory is running out it creates a new layer essentially and we also saw that in this process it might create many layers or it might create none essentially. So, that will depend on what is the size of the problem that you are solving. If you are solving a very large problem, it, it might possibly create many layers. If you are solving a small problem, then it may not create any uh, relay layers and just solve the whole problem in one go itself, which of course would be faster and uh, would fit into the space available that we have essentially. Remember that our main concern here is to how to manage with the space that is available to us. So, we saw this uh, algorithm, this was given to us by Zhao and Hansen and uh, they essentially broke up uh, the closed list into two sets kernel and boundary. Kernel was something which could be deleted whenever required and boundary was kept and boundary was kept to avoid the search from leaking back essentially. So, boundary essentially served the original purpose of closed which is to check whether you are going back and kernel could be deleted. And what they said was that when, when, uh, when you are running out of memory, you just simply delete the kernel and convert that boundary nodes into a relay node and then carry on in A star like fashion again, except that you keep identifying which of the clothes are in the kernel, which of the clothes are in boundary and if need be create another layer by deleting another set of kernel nodes. And it just did this process and it would create as many relay layers as required by the problem and eventually solve the problem by making a certain number of recursive call. We also observed that because it creates relay layers only when it is running out of memory, one can imagine that in the recursive call it would not create any further relay layers and most likely would solve the problem in one go essentially. So, there is the level of nesting that happens in smart memory graph search would be much lower than that of the divide and conquer frontier search, which kind of very rigidly keeps recursively solving till you have reached an edge uh, as the smallest problem to solve. Now, we said that the next thing that we want to study is pruning the closed list or oh, pruning the open list. The reason for that as we have been repeatedly saying is that in a general search tree which is growing exponentially, it is the open list which grows faster than the closed list and we saw that and that is why we could implement algorithms like DFID uh, which uh, behaved like breadth first search, but which used the memory of uh, depth first search which is linear but at the expense of revisiting the closed nodes again and again 
And then we said argued that the amount of work you do in revisiting those closed nodes can be ignored or it is not significant essentially.